Hello there. Welcome to another video from Aology. In this video, I want to talk about MPT 7 billion parameters model and also we want to walk through the way of fine tuning large language model. I have seen that this model MPT 7 billion by Mosaic ML is announced and this is a standard for open source and commercially usable large language model. And this is very exciting news because uh, if you compare it with the other language model like Llama or stuff like that, this is the only uh, available solution for commercially use cases. And also in terms of the performance, it's really cool. There is a table here. It's showing that, so comparing with Llama in different benchmarks and different tasks, it sometimes outperforms and in other cases, it's very close to the Llama. The MPT is available in Hugging Face and it's also written very clean. So it's really easy to grasp what's happening in there. And uh, what we want to do here now is just loading that and see some of its capability. So I have prepared a notebook. And what I do have here is uh, I am importing the torch and then transformer and now if you have installed the latest version of transformer you are able to load from mosaic ml the mpt 7 billion parameters and i just put it in one gpu that gpu is 16 gigabytes and it can fit in one gpu which is really cool but for the training you or fine tuning you need like some approach like deep speed or maybe you need a better a GPU memory at, at least I think 10 gigabytes more than this. I can show you that a CUDA version is not correctly here. So in my user local directory, I have CUDA 11.2 and it's recommended to use CUDA 11.4 and higher because there are some attention, uh, flash attention that can make the uh, output generation and autoregressive output generation a little more faster. And also uh, the model is capable of, like there is a paper called Alibi for improving, increasing the number of tokens. Let's look at this. I think there are some explanation here. So they mentioned here, first of all, you can use uh, like flash attention. And as I said, the Alibi and more. And also there is a point here that uh, if you want to fit it on one GPU, you need to uh, loaded in bflout 16 and it doesn't sacrifice the performance and also it said although the model was trained with sequence the length of 2048 uh, alibi enabled user to increase the maps maximum sequence uh, during fine tuning or inference so you can even increase it to 4096 very similar to way uh, that we can train a, a causal language model here we can also load the causal language model and you have different options like using the Mosaic LM MPT 7 billion parameters or you want to use GPT-3, uh, GPT-NOIC, GPT-J, all of them are available in Hugging Face. And they mentioned here the tokenizer here is by the Eluter AI, GPT-NOIC 20 billion. And so let that back to the Jupyter I have, we can talk about it. So currently I have it in my one GPU and also I'm showing that like taking in one GPU, it's about 13 gigabytes of uh, 16 gigabytes. And if I want to do the back probe, I will have some issue with it. So um, what I want to do first, let's see what the number of parameters in the model. So it is 7 billion, it is 6.6 .6 actually. And what else we can do is we can import the tokenizer. And I think the tokenizer here is same as the when we use the Eluter AI. So by loading the tokenizer, let, let's uh, ask a question like this is a prompt. We say this is image path and we put just a comment like load image. And we want to ask language model to generate some output for us. So first of all, we need to tokenize it and get the tokenized example and the tokenized example is uh, including input IDs and attention mask, which is one for all of these tokens. And then we want to pass that tokenized example 
because I want to be this in the same device, I put it in the GPU. And I'm saying just generate 150 tokens after using auto recursive way. And uh, they do sampling, get top five and top probability of 95%. So there is a like beam search in there. So when we predict something by beam search, it pick the best one and it will go to 150 times auto recursive generation. So let me explain this a little more. We have uh, like this text. What, what we do is we pass this and we predict the next word, then we get this as a new, uh, if you want to have a same size, so we will just uh, remove the first token, add the new token, and continuing to that until 150. Each time we are predicting some tokens, uh, like some probability, we pick top five, and those are with confidence with 95%. And because we are not sure that we should like pick the maximum, numbers we do like uh, beam search so after some prediction uh, we get the maximum probability over a sequence not just one token so by doing that it will generate an out uh, generate an output and that output has also the uh, has also the like this input id and uh, this input id is like this is showing 5000 uh, the index of 5,695 voc vocabulary in the vocabulary list that we have, in the token list that we have. And the output here is same, so we need to uh, decode it. So there is a batch decode because it's, it, this model generates, suppose that the data is already in batch. And we also want to skip some special token because if we do not do it, the output answer, including some of the unrelevant information. So by just passing this, and, and this, now we are getting 150 token after, and you see this is finished after because this is limited by us. And so what we can do is fine tuning language model. This is 7 billion parameters. And there are different way. One is to freezing the, uh, the language model layers and just fine tuning the head. Or maybe we just fine tune the whole language model. So let's see what we can do. So suppose that the answer after this line, load image, we wanna not use the CV2, we wanna use like pillow. This can be any example you want like entity extraction and you have some text and you wanna say that this should be the entity that you wanna extract it and you have like few shot sample of that, like 50 example or less, even five example. And you just wanna fine tune the model it's different than prompting. And prompting, you just uh, give give it zero shot some example and just uh, ask it to repeat those kind of pattern. But in this case, you want to fine tune it. So I just want to explain that how this works. So when I have this answering uh, and I tokenize this, similar to what I have for the tokenized example, tokenized question I have. Uh, so I can pass it to the model this time not by the generate, I can just pass it to the model to get the output logic shape. And this time would be much faster because we are not like generating 150. Yeah, the shape of this tokenized, tokenized example is 18 because we have 18 tokens totally in this uh, text. And when we pass that um, input to the model, the output size is similar number of token, but Based on the vocabulary size, uh, it is like, in, in this example, it is 50K vocabulary size. So for each token, we will get some logits in the uh, shape of 50,432. So what we want to do, we want to get the latest word. So let me explain it this way. So we have a text here and the length of this text, for example, is 18. Okay. So we pass it to a model. Uh, let me change this color to this. So we pass it to large language model or it can be a language model. And what we get out of it, it's again, something in length of 80, but um, in, I mean, in terms of logits it has, 
it would be in the number of features. Yeah. So each token here will get one feature. But the point here is if I have a sentence like cat sat on mat. So if I have a sentence like here, so I will get something like cat sat on mat with something. So I have the next word prediction because this is autoregressive. So the length of the token always in this side and this side are same. But what we want to do is we get the last uh, hidden representation here. And if you want to change it to something else, we should can we, we can just do like a cross entropy loss on here, like uh, a simple training. Any we should see that that language model is mostly trained with what kind of loss uh, based on the paper, but like a cross entropy loss. So for example, instead of wheat, I'm saying that I want to say cat sat on mat for. I want to like say for what time instead of saying by which or something like that. So if I want to do this, what I want to do is I want to get the last token here and I want to get uh, the first token in my answer. So my answer is like for 20 minutes, something like that. Yeah, this is my answer. So I want to compare these last logits with this first answer I have. I have the output and I can say, give me the output logits and the first batch, the last token. And if I see that, that would be like one of the token and in the same size of the uh, features that we have uh, or vocabulary size that we have. And then um, that is a tokenized answer. So the tokenized answer, we want to do the same, but we want to get here for the tokenized answer, we want to just, just get first batch, first row of it, and we have that label. So uh, let me let me show you an example. So here, the label that we have is 4064. So we want to predict the vocabulary 4064 instead of what was in, the, in there. there. If I do like torch arc max on it, let me torch arc max. So it's Give me 5,695, I'm saying no, give me this one. So there is a cross entropy loss here. So what we can do is simply, we, we say all of the parameter of the model we want to train. If you want to just train latest layers of this, so what we can do is we, we can back to the model. Let's see. Let's see what is going on in the last layer. This is really big. So. I hope I can like get some block of it. So there are some MPT blocks. Maybe we can just fine tune the last MT block, MPT block. And for now, suppose if you want to just fine tune the whole model, and that would be just like a few example because we don't want to change the overall loss of the model, just some of the output. So. If we calculate the loss between this label and between that last token output, uh, we need to define the loss and optimizer. And the loss value is this. Now we can write the uh, for loop and over the data that we have uh, apply this kind of optimizing. But there is a point here that I'm not able to do it because I, I will get, let me try. So I will uh, get like out of memory issue. And seems like I not sure, but I think if I had like 24 gigabytes GPU, I was able to train this or fine tune this. And based on some of the uh, stack overflow things, you don't need to have like thousand example, just a few example, and the model can learn what you are uh, proposing to it. So if you want to fix it in another way, like you want to have another empty uh, M. I haven't tried this, but let's see what we can do with it. So we want to see how we can access to each of these blocks. So uh, I think we have is model named parameters. So if I list this, it has like the parameters with their name, I guess. 
Oh my god. I got the out of memory things. Uh, maybe I should do like for name from in model name parameters. What we can do is we just print them. So we say parameter that number of element and this name okay sounds good so by doing that we see how layers are there so we have this one this weights then we have some normalization that doesn't have any weight we have another weights there 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 until we reach to the block number 31 we have the last layer i think down projection and then we have normalization i think we need to go to the number 31 layer number 31 we can say transformer blocks 31 maybe i'm not sure so let's do that so we can do model i don't need this anymore so you can i can do model transformer blocks uh yeah transformer my bad blocks and maybe i can do the last one okay cool 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 it's a mp3 block that's block 31 yeah that's this block the whole block i think the size of this should be the overall size of this one so let me again bring this back just just for my curiosity because I'm not sure. So, 200 million parameters. Let's let's check that in number 31. I just want to check that I'm getting the right model there. So we have so we have 67.1 plus 67.1 plus 16.8 plus 50.3, which is exactly this number. So we are getting this layer. What we can do, we can freeze all of the other layers here when we get the parameters we can say uh, not this one so we can change those parameter requires grad and equal to false but in some condition if name is not include 31 that's the way i want to implement it or oh, better say is 31 in not in name so we wanna yeah you see so now these are trainable these are non-trainable if I just wanna make sure that I'm doing this right let me copy and paste this here so now you see that all of these these are already like saved because they were object and reference so we don't need to do anything else so the parameters of the model now is this way so when we again come here and we say optimizer we want to train only these parameters uh, when we back propagate it it will be back propagated until to that point so training this would be much simpler than train training the whole neural network and now it's time to train so it's trained yeah just the last layer now let's ask the previous question again and see just by one step of fine-tuning what happened i can have this and i can pass this again to the model and see after that i need to again decode it and print the answer this is just maybe it's just like ridiculous just to test it after one iteration of backward propagation over last layer but I think it is worth to see what's happening there. Okay. Okay, cool. So you see just one iteration of fine tuning with a small learning rate. So we, we didn't check many things here, but the output now is changed. The overall output of the model is changed and we were able to train it. The only things that matter is to have good training data set. And by training this data set, then maybe you want to have like human feedback on it. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have fun.